everyone. Are you here because like me, you've noticed that there's maybe a little less hair in your ponytail. There's more hair on the floor of the shower stall after a shower. Maybe you're just noticing that you're shedding all over the place. I have been living with that for a good two or three years and I have a pretty good feeling I am not the only one. So while I am not a doctor and I don't have a definitive cause or treatment or cure for you, I do have a lot of information to share and I'm sharing what's personal to me in the hopes that it'll help you get started or maybe get a little farther on figuring out how to address the same issues for you. Because with hair loss and hair thinning, especially in women, there is not a one size fits all answer, cure, treatment plan, there's lots of options and it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I'm hoping this video helps give you a little more clarity and gets you started on the right track. I've made a lot of videos over the years about hair, but it's always been about hair and beauty. My favorite styling products, how I style my hair. I have shared at least one sort of treatment for addressing hair loss and hair thinning, and we'll get to that in a minute. But I haven't sat down and talked to you about the causes and how to get started. So let's just address a few of the causes. And I'm bringing this up because like I said, there isn't a one size fits all, and you may fall into one of these categories, none of these categories or several of them. So some easy ones to address are things like stress, post COVID hair loss. When I say easy, at least you know what caused it and it generally resolves itself. Uh, maybe you just had a baby, you're postpartum. Generally you see a lot of hair thinning and hair loss with that. Again, that usually resolves itself. Then there are things maybe not so easy to address like family history. It's a hereditary problem. Or maybe it's as simple as certain hairstyles that you're doing that cause stress on the hair follicle, like too tight ponytails, cornrows, things like that. It could be certain medications that you're already taking for another underlying medical condition are affecting your hair growth or hair loss. Or there is a specific medical condition that you have, like I do, I have hypothyroidism, that even if your symptoms and blood levels are all good, may also affect hair loss and hair thinning. It could also be attributed to your hormones, like if you're premenopausal or going through menopause, those changes in your sex hormones can wreak havoc on your hair. And also, you could be low in certain vitamins, minerals, iron deficiencies, B12, vitamin D, there's a whole long list. So what do you do? Well, if you're like me, you do everything but what you're supposed to do first. So I knew this was a problem a good two years ago at least, and I started taking biotin, thinking that was going to help. I've since learned that biotin's great for a lot of things, but actual hair growth, not so much. I tried uh, Modair, I didn't even talk about that, I don't think, I, I tried different kinds of over-the-counter supplements. I did try a laser for hair regrowth, which does work, but I'm gonna get to that at the end, so stick around for that. I eventually gave up on finding the reasons why and went to finding ways to cover it up. So I tried hair extensions, um, one of those halo hair crown things. Those work for a little bit. It's not a permanent fix, and I'm still not convinced that the hair extensions didn't do some minimal damage to my hair. So finally I did what I should have done and what I've been advocating for those of you who've been watching my channel for a long time to do, and that is to talk to an expert, in this case, a doctor, specifically a dermatologist. Now I have an endocrinologist, and I will admit that there are things that he should have asked for but at the to look into, but at the end of the day, it's a dermatologist who is specifically trained to address hair loss issues. So I made an appointment with my dermatologist and we did a full patient intake. She looked at my family history. She looked at my medical history, the medications I'm currently on, and she did see some red flags. Like I said, I do have hypothyroidism, which is a major contributor. I also am probably pre-menopausal. Just let's say that that's also probably a factor. We ruled out other things as well. And so the next step was let's take a blood test. And so that's what I want to talk to you about. Some things that you can do or that you should ask your doctor to do if they don't automatically suggest it. I have found over the course of having different medical issues that we are our own best advocate. I'm not saying we know better than doctors. Absolutely not. We don't have the training, but 
there are just so many things with the human body and so many areas of expertise that it's sometimes they're gonna miss something. They're only human. Or maybe they have a certain way of doing things and maybe just throwing in a couple of suggestions of alternative things might be something they're open to. I, I'm getting sidetracked, but I think it's really important that you find a doctor that's open to listening to your suggestions and then is open to discussing them with you and explaining why are we not, why not, those are good ideas. I sat down with my dermatologist and she suggested I get some blood tests and we tested for a couple of things. First, we tested for zinc levels, vitamin B levels, and ferritin levels. It's a good start. We ruled out my medications, nothing was contributing to hair loss, and we acknowledge that there are two probably underlying medical reasons for the hair loss as well. You can also ask for a thyroid test and a hormone test to see where your sex hormones are because those can also obviously contribute to it. In my case, the results came back pretty quickly. My vitamin B is great, my zinc levels are great, but my ferritin was very low. It's generally understood that your ferritin, that's related to the iron in your blood, while I'm not anemic, the specific ferritin levels for hair growth should be at 70 or higher, and mine were significantly lower. So when she got those blood results back, we sat down and came up with an initial treatment plan. And part of what is frustrating about hair loss is there are plans and there are treatment options and none of them will work overnight. So my particular case is a three-prong approach and I will do regular checkups. I've had one follow-up so far to see how things are progressing. So I am taking two oral medications and using one topical application. So my oral medications are um, a prescription iron supplement. It's, it's prescription, but it's also sold over the counter. And I'm not gonna give you how much I'm taking or how often I'm taking it because I want you to go speak to a medical professional. You should not just start taking iron supplements and guessing at how much. Too much can be dangerous, so definitely do this under a doctor's supervision. Something to note with iron supplements is that while it can help increase hair growth, it also can slow down stuff going on in the bathroom. So definitely plan to take another kind of supplement, like some sort of stool softener or something that will help you go to the bathroom more regularly because iron supplements generally cause constipation. So definitely wanna to talk to your doctor about that. The actual prescription that I'm taking is spironolactone. Spironolactone is used for a variety of situations. It can be used as a blood pressure medication. In my case, at the right dose, it's actually a testosterone blocker. Too much testosterone can slow down or stop hair growth. We are probably all familiar with testosterone and male pattern baldness. I don't have male pattern baldness, but it's all related. So spironolactone has been known to help with uh, slowing down shedding, increasing hair growth. It's also known to take a very long time to see results with spironolactone, a minimum six months, closer to a year, for most people. And then the third avenue of treatment that we're trying so far is actually a topical, and this they sent into a compound pharmacy that was delivered to me, and it has three main ingredients. It has minoxidil in it, which is the same as Rogaine. It has estrone in it, which is a very weak form of estrogen. And then it has, I gotta read this one, latanoprost, which is the ingredient that you find in a lot of lash growth serums like Latisse, it's also in a lot of over-the-counter hair growth serums like Vegamore or Nutrafol. So all three together in a compounded formula are thought to work even more effectively, and I apply this to my hair once a day. Now, I put mine, I've seen some th significant thinning along my hairline here, but really there's nowhere else on my scalp that I can pinpoint, hey, there's less hair here. It's sort of an overall general thinning. So I have been at this a couple of months now and I have had my first follow-up checkup and both my doctor and my hairstylist who sees my head every six weeks has noticed that there is significant regrowth, tons and tons of little stubby baby hairs all throughout my scalp. 
So this is good news. It looks like the threefold approach is working. It's too early to say about the spironolactone, but at least the iron content and or the iron supplements and this topical seem to be working quite well. I am due for a second follow-up in August where I'll have blood work done to check on my iron levels because that's very important as well. So while my treatment plan appears to be working, we're in the very early stages, it's also important to remember that if I don't fully correct the underlying cause, and maybe it's something that I can't fully correct, maybe it's just something that requires ongoing treatment, but if I don't address that, and I stop all the things that I'm doing, the hair loss will continue. It's not gonna go away. And think about it like this. It's like I said, I have hypothyroidism. I have to take a thyroid supplement every single day for the rest of my life. This is not a condition that's going to just go away one day. If I stop taking the medication, I will get sick. So it's just a maintenance type program. And that's how you have to look at treating hair loss and hair thinning. Most of the time, it's not related to one specific cause that's just gonna resolve itself. It's an ongoing, underlying condition. Sometimes it has a specific treatment plan, sometimes it doesn't, but it's generally not something you can just find an instant cure for and you're good to go. It's going to require continued maintenance. So I'm sticking with this treatment plan and now that I see that it's working, I am going to go back to regular use of my Eye Restore laser. I did a couple of videos on this a little while back, it is an over-the-counter FDA cleared laser and LED device that uh, stimulates hair growth and it works. I used it for quite a while and my hair was growing like wildfire and then I stupidly thought, oh great, now I can stop. No, I could not, especially since I wasn't doing anything to address the underlying cause. So just about a month or so after I stopped, I started noticing the problem happen again. I haven't been using it. I wanted to make sure that if we saw results after I started doing my treatments that I knew it was from the treatment and not the laser. So now that we're starting to see a little bit of hair regrowth, I'm gonna put the laser back into my protocol. If you're interested in it, I do have a link below in the description box. It is an affiliate link. This is a very expensive device. Um, it's upwards of $1,200 depending on where you, which one you pick. So I don't want you to just think, oh, instant cure, let's jump on this. It is a huge investment. It does actually work and it has been recommended by board certified dermatologists, but I want you to be well aware it is not an immediate fix. It's something you need to use constantly. There is a maintenance level as well and it is a serious investment. There are some other treatment options that can be done in the doctor's office that I want you to be aware of. I haven't needed to try these yet, but I haven't rolled anything out either. The first is in-office laser treatments, very similar to the laser device that I have at home, obviously a stronger level and probably also equally expensive. There are also corticosteroid injections that you can get into your scalp. You can also get PRP therapy, which is platelet-rich plasma therapy, where they take, they draw your blood, they put it in a centrifuge, they pull out the plasma, they, re, they inject it back into your scalp. Um, I've heard that can be quite effective depending on what the cause of the hair loss is. There are a couple other oral medications. There's some, another topical uh, medication that we haven't tried yet. So there are other options. I'm just sharing the journey that I'm on so far. If you wanna get really good advice from someone who actually knows what they're talking about, there are two doctors who have a really strong presence on social media that I very much trust for their opinion. In fact, Dr. Dre, the one that I'm gonna recommend first, actually recommended my dermatologist to me. So, and she was spot on. What an amazing um, team they have. So Dr. Dre is here on YouTube and on Instagram. She addresses all of these and more on both social media uh, platforms. And then Dr. Bonasali is another doctor I've had the pleasure of working with through social media. We met in LA years ago when we were both doing something for Neutrogena. And he is an amazing dermatologist who does amazing things for his patients in New York. And I think he might have an office in Miami as well. And he is on Instagram on a regular basis giving really excellent, excellent advice. So I will link both Dr. Dre and Dr. Bonasali's uh, YouTube and Instagram down below. So that's where we are with my hair loss journey, or shall I say hair regrowth journey. 
If you are interested in more of the beauty side of how I style my hair, my favorite hair products and so forth, don't look at today's hair. I purposely left it for a bad hair day to film this video so you could really see what it looks like right now. Um, but if you are interested in more of those type videos, I'll link a few down below in the description box. And of course, please subscribe, follow me here on YouTube and on Instagram where we can catch up and keep up with each other. And I'll be sure to give updates throughout the year when I have more to share. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for hanging out today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.